good day, Susan. Good, good to see you. See you too. It's yeah. great to be here to talk about awards nominations. Exactly, a topic uh, that is very close and dear to all of our hearts. Uh, when we come across so many deserving professionals uh, in our travels around the globe, visiting with different factions, and then this question often comes up to me, that uh, how do we have more representation from our section, what should we do so that there are some so many deserving professionals and not everybody's in Houston. So I think it's a right time to have this chat. Absolutely. And of course, with SP award nominations, you can't nominate yourself, can you? So you cannot, absolutely it, it not. It takes a village, as they say, to pull together good award nominations to put the right candidates forward and gather the right letters of support. What are some of the tips and tricks that you have for putting together yeah, good awards nominations? The, the, the way I see this is uh, like you're preparing for maybe the president of uh, your country or whatever. So meaning you have to put forth your all the best qualifications and for the purpose of our awards, most of our technical awards, whether they are regional or international awards, what we are looking for and when I say we, I mean I'm representing all the technical committees that are looking at these awards nominations. What the committees look for is the technical competence. The person may be excellent at uh, doing some community service, SPE service. They may be very good leaders, but we are trying to honor here the professional competence, technical excellence. So the first thing first, when you are nominating someone or when you are providing support for your own nomination, you have to keep in mind that the committee is going to look at nothing but what you present on the paper or what you upload on the forum. Because committee does not, committee is required not to go out and research on their own, own about your background or what are your accomplishments. So try to, as they say, try to put your best foot forward to help this village make the right decision because so many deserving professionals are out there. And what I have observed is uh, people somehow took some shortcut in putting, pulling together the necessary backup support and that's where they ended up hurting their candidate's chance. I find, like you, that it's good to find letters of support or endorsers, uh, people who will provide short quotes, who actually have first-hand knowledge of the candidate's contributions. And, yes. And that's very valuable because they're Absolutely. not rehashing their resume, mm -hmm. they're really speaking from their personal experience and they can provide stories or anecdotes about how this individual displayed this expertise. Absolutely right. Anybody can go and read the curriculum vita or a resume of somebody's activities. But what we are trying to capture here is something unique that made you eligible or that made you uh, competent as is expected by this international community. Whether you are being nominated for regional award or you are nominated for international award. The process is same, as you mentioned. You require some three to five competent professionals to vouch for your professional competency and the achievements that you have accomplished that makes you the best candidate out there amongst plethora of candidates that the committees review every year. Now, th there has to be some memorable quotes, but in addition to that, uh, what I would like to point out is that rather than saying he was the best team player or we achieved our annual goal in record time, you have to focus on the technical side of it. What did it contribute to the company for which the individual was working for? What did it contribute to the local petroleum community, regional community, and international community? So you have to point out some of the professional publications, including patterns or 
if the company has gone out and made some public pronouncement in their investor filings and such that resulted in demonstrable savings or demonstrable benefits to the company, to the community, those are the type of evidences that helps your candidate to move. That's right, and we're looking for the impact, the contributions that the candidate has made that really have a uh, perceivable impact that can be measured. Correct. In, in uh, increased production, increased reserves, cost savings, yes. increased revenue, the, mm -hmm. the things that we look at, it's, it's much like a reference for a job application when you're looking for Absolutely. someone who has a good track record in, in that respect. In some aspect, it is even more than the job application because in case of job application, you get to meet the hiring manager. Here, the committee has to solely work with what you presented as supporting documentation. We cannot emphasize enough the need for providing the supporting documentation that really shouts out to the world that look here, what has been accomplished, what has been achieved in professional arena. Now, some of the tidbits about uh, community service or service to the society, SPE, that helps, but those are not primary criteria that we look for you how to demonstrate beyond shed of all doubt what has been the technical contribution. Right, and, and certainly as I'm thinking about uh, finding people to support a nomination that I'm making, I will look for different periods of an individual's career mm -hmm. when they might have been working in different departments or perhaps even for different employers. Mm -hmm. I, I will look for people from partners, from service companies, from competitors yes. who, who would be willing to speak on behalf of the candidate Absolutely. rather than finding all of the supporting documentation from the same employer or same university. Yep. And, and this is very, very critical and important because we are an international society. And if you have had a chance to work for multiple companies during your career, if your candidate has worked across the geographic boundaries, then it is better that we hear from all of these diverse stakeholders, be it your competitor, or your collaborator from another company or collaborator within your own company, uh, different managerial level, even it could be somebody who, with whom you corresponded on some research activities that you perform. So you're absolutely right. The, the diversity of the recommending uh, persons is key and very critical. We do not want to hear all the evidence to come from one set of stakeholders, whether it's the same geographical region or same company. You know, one trick that I've learned is to work with a committee mm -hmm. to put together nominations, whether the yes. committee is formed by members of your section's leadership team, mm -hmm. maybe the committee is a group of alumni from the same alma mater, mm -hmm. maybe the committee is a group of people who work for the same employer, or maybe it's just a group of friends that mm -hmm. want to advance the nominations for SPE yes. in a certain direction. Yeah. If, if you work with a group of people, usually you can find people that know the individuals you're nominating mm -hmm. firsthand, mm -hmm. and that way you can have a more qualified nomination package rather than having someone who doesn't have personal knowledge. Yes, Th this is very important and critical for the sections uh, that have relatively, how should I put it, less uh, number of number of members. It doesn't mean that smaller sections can't replicate that process with their smaller yes. membership. If they put together a small team of say five people that mm -hmm. form a nominating committee, mm -hmm. they can work together to put forth a candidate for almost every award category. Yes, now here I would like to plug in another very valuable resource that SPE provides. Like all the networking opportunities that are being made available, whether you are attending annual technology conference or you are participating in SPE community or even LinkedIn, that is where you can expand the community of people who can provide you demonstrable supporting evidence. 
you do not have to just look within your immediate geographic region because some sections may not have sufficient number of uh, members or sufficient experience and that's where you reach out to the different communities that are available on the SP Connect and you can even recruit some of them. So it may be a technical section that works together exactly. to put forth nom nominees for a certain category. Yes. There may be different groups that have common interests that can Very find true. ways to, to work across section mm -hmm, boundaries, mm -hmm. across geographic boundaries yes. to bring in more yeah. candidates from around the world. I would like to go a little bit into regional awards as well as international awards, right? Until now, I think most of our assumption was we are talking about international awards. So, your, if you are appointing somebody for regional awards, keep in mind that if they win the regional award, then they would be automatically eligible or they will be entered into international award space also. So, you should be, even though you are nominating somebody for regional award, you should be thinking that they are going to go into international award. Meaning, start putting together all of that documentary evidence at the early stage so that your region also puts forth the best candidate in the pool. Right, so from the international perspective, you're asked to list their top five papers, the most significant papers yes. they've mm -hmm. co-authored in their career. So do that as well for the regional category, or at least yes. give some thought to mentioning those Absolutely. in your awards nomination. So think ahead, think yes. ahead to put exactly. a successful candidate forward yep. Yep. at the regional level who can compete mm -hmm. at the international level. And at the international level, once you nominate an individual one year, even if they don't get selected, yes. they will be in the pool of candidates for the next two years. Yes. So consider refreshing the nomination, adding new papers and patents, new contributions to it, Very adding true. new material to make sure it's as current and up-to-date as possible. Yes, and, and, and this is a very important point that most of the people miss it. So when I was serving on the Productions Award Committee three years, we saw that some of the uh, nominations became stale from the second year onward because nobody went back and decided. So if you're nominating somebody or if you are being nominated, then think about going back this following year if you are not successful in the first year. Think about going back the following year, refreshing, maybe adding some more evidence or maybe getting a stronger letter of recommendation because committee members change from year to year and they are required to review the, all the applicants with the fresh set of eyes. And when I ask people to write letters of support, I usually provide them with the criteria for that individual award mm -hmm. so they can speak directly to how the candidate meets that criteria. And I usually ask for one extra support letter in case mm -hmm. I need a backup. Yes. So that way, if you can present three, I would ask for four, mm -hmm. four individuals, mm -hmm. and then present the ones that best support uh, the candidate. Yes. Deadlines uh, are important. And you oh, absolutely, yes. Deadlines are right. So for our international awards, deadline is 15th of February of every year. And for regional, it is the 1st of March. Right, right, so right please keep in mind those deadlines as you are assembling what I would call a package for this nomination process. It's very, very important. And as you mentioned, even though the, the, the nomination process requires you, you to submit only three, but keep four or five, because committees do review all of those. It does not hurt you. But by the same token, make sure that those recommendation letters are not just parroting what is inside your CVs. It has to be something, as you said, memorable, something that helps support your candidacy or your candidate's candidacy. Right, and I think it's helpful to ask uh, someone to write a letter who not only knows the candidate, but knows the award uh, itself. So perhaps a past winner of the award yep. or someone who's very knowledgeable in the subject might be the best supporters. That That is a very good, uh, that is a very good uh, tip that you have given, that if you can find somebody who has been awarded this particular award. And second tip that you gave about keeping in mind the criteria for the 
particular technical award. Sometime uh, uh, an individual may have worked across the disciplines, meaning they may have competence in maybe formation evaluation as well as on the production side. But if they are being nominated for production awards, then please highlight all the production related as the primary uh, competencies. And, and start the process now because mm -hmm. those February 15th and March 1st deadlines come up very quickly. Very quickly. So you need to I... get your uh, process started to identify potential yes. candidates to find the writers for the, the letters of support or quotes of yes. support, to put together the CV and all the evidence uh, from the individual, and to have the nomination submitted on time. The earlier you start working on it, ideally around the ATCE time frame, if you start working on it, that is the best approach to sure. take. It's a time when often our members come together, they get to reconnect exactly. with colleagues. Yeah. And I think in certain parts of the world, there may be some cultural uh, nuances that we need to think about for yes. nominating candidates. Mm -hmm. They may be more reticent to be nominated. We may have to coach them to, to really talk them into this yes. to consider being nominated. Yes. And they're very deserving, mm -hmm. but they're not seeking the limelight. Uh, another thing we have to also leverage here is that we have an excellent SPE awards website where there are examples of recommendation letters and also uh, what not to do specifically or how not to write a recommendation. So please refer to those resources. Again, allow yourself enough time so that you can review those resources, you can put together your nomination package and then you can submit it in timely fashion. It was um, uh, fun talking to you uh, today about uh, this entire nomination workflow and the processes, how it works, and uh, I hope that we have provided enough tips or enough uh, uh, pointers for some more successful nominations that will make uh, not only your success rate high as a nominee or nominator, but also it will make committee that is going to review the nomination their job also uh, easier and more fun. That's right. I hope we've taken some of the mystery out of this process. There yes, is a absolutely. good way to write nominations and if you put enough time into it and effort, uh, some of your nominees will be selected and it's always uh, very fulfilling and rewarding absolutely, yes. to see yep. your candidates be selected for the awards that they so richly deserve. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.